So today we're going to talk about what men are ridiculously attracted to. And when women have these three habits, they have a greater chance for success of attracting, let's call it that high quality man. Now, before I jump in, I want to actually read to you from my blog this morning from Instagram to illustrate a point. And the blog goes like this. My mother was born almost 100 years ago. Kind of hard to believe that now. 100 years ago. And at age 16, she met my father once at an officer's ball. This is during World War II period of time. And she said at that ball, she goes, that is my future husband. Several years, oh, and she was age 16 at the time. Well, seven years later, they bumped into each other again and were married shortly thereafter. She dated only one man in her entire life, and she was married for 66 years before she passed away. And stories like these romanticize the process because dating today is vastly different. And I often wonder if every person you ever date, so if you went out on a one-hour date, you went out on a five-hour date, every single date was actually considered a relationship. Just play with me for a moment that every date you ever went on was a relationship. Most people then... Um, Oh, let me just, if every person you dated even just once was a relationship, then most people in the dating process are experiencing many, many, many relationships, unlike my mother. Is there a grander design happening in human development? My belief that dating today is a new phase in human evolution, allowing one to truly explore their inner world and become more evolved from an emotional perspective. What if every romantic encounter or interaction is an opportunity to peel the layers of imprinting and trauma that block us from truly being in our sovereignty? Okay, so I just said a mouthful there, but this is going to so relate to what I'm about to share with you, so stick with me. But let's face it, if you've been watching my channel, you know I say we are swimming in a sea of emotional dysfunctionality regarding human pair bonding. From avoidant attachment style to anxious attachment style to choosing bad boys to choosing someone like your emotionally unavailable parent to those spenders and those users and narcissists and childhood wounds and adult traumas like divorce, we are, we are in a landmine of a variety of different circumstances. And what I've observed actually as a coach that nearly majority of my clients have had at least five significant relationships in their life that lasted more than three months. Okay. So when I, let me reframe the word significant. Let me rewind that. They've had five relationships in their lives that have lasted more than three months. That's the average client I speak to. See, unlike my mother had one person her entire life, we, many of us, are experiencing multiple, multiple relationships. And I believe because of that, there's a grander picture going on. I believe from a human evolution perspective, the days of what my mother experienced is, go is going to be far in the past. I believe we are actually experiencing a variety of different relationships or encounters with people so we can learn more about ourselves. In fact, the meme that I posted with that Instagram post said the following, what if every failed relationship was preparing one for the most important relationship in one's life? The relationship with oneself, looking in the mirror. What if that is the grander picture happening right now in human development, whether you are a believer of God, universe, spirit, what if that is actually happening? So what, what's the benefit of knowing all this? Well, the benefit is, particularly for those of you who do introspective work, who do personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, number one, the, mo the fundamental, okay, how do I say this? The people who are more likely to achieve what I call a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship are people that know themselves. They really know who they are at a very introspective level. They know what triggers them. They know what turns them on. They know what who they are. They know their deal breakers. They have a real great sense of comp understanding compatibility. 
And these are the many facts, especially, and they've studied human behavior. They studied thing, the books like uh, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. They've studied, and by the way, all the books I recommend are listed below. They've read the book, Getting the Love You Want by Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt to know why you might choose someone like who's like your father or like your mother. I have a pattern of choosing women who are like my mother. They've even read my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Why I'm recommending, why I'm suggesting this is the more we understand human behavior, the more we understand patterns, our own patterns first, but the patterns of others, we have a greater chance of choosing people that are more aligned with us, that are more apt to actually go the distance if you're one of those people seeking to go the distance. You know, I worked with a woman um, not too long ago. She had what's known as an anxious attachment style, and she had a pattern of choosing men who were an avoidant attachment style. And those avoidant men, those men who were emotionally constipated, emotionally unavailable, from the very early stages, they come on strong and then they just start to breadcrumb afterwards. Have you ever experienced a man that came on strong and then breadcrumbed? Yeah. Do you realize that you can actually predict this happening sooner rather than later if you ask the right questions? In fact, my entire coaching program, if you need some, right here is a link to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you, is designed to uncover those people who are emotionally grown up and emotionally mature versus those who are emotionally constipated. So what is the first habit or technique, if you will, to being ridiculously attractive to that quality man? Because we're going to differentiate those men, uh, those quality men in just a moment. I think one of the most important fundamental habits is the is the embracing of self-love. And as I said in my book, self-love is a journey of personal development, self-help and spiritual work. It's about knowing thyself. It's about being in your sovereignty. We all have childhood wounds and adult traumas. We all do. And by the way, childhood wounds doesn't have to be something radically significant that happened in childhood. It could even be something benign that makes, you have to recognize Everything our parents taught us, every single day of our life, we as children were absorbing things at a granular level. And we have, we have forgotten 90% or more of our childhood experiences. So we may not be even aware that we have a wound or an experience from childhood. And we oftentimes associate childhood wounds with physical abuse, emotional, like severe physical and emotional abuse. And by the way, you could have had loving parents and they could have traumatized you unbeknownst to you. And it's not that it's repressed. It's just we don't have the capacity to remember every single minute of our lives. I mean, can you honestly say you can remember every single second you've ever had in your life? No. Most people have a hard time remembering what they did yesterday, let alone five minutes ago. <laughs> So recognizing that when we do therapy, when we do personal development, self-help and spiritual work, we begin a practice of healing and that's what self-love is about. And why is that so ridiculously attractive to a man? Because a woman in her sovereignty is a beautiful thing. A woman who is in her power is incredibly attractive. And I don't mean masculine energy. But Jonathan, I'm just supposed to sit in my feminine energy and just let men leave. No, that's not what it's about. Being in your sovereignty has nothing to do with femininity or masculinity. It is just being in your divinity when you are in your power. In fact, many of you might be wondering, what is a high quality man or woman? I believe it's people with solid character in their life. In other words, their actions consistently match their words. They've healed from their past experiences. They are generous and kind. See, sadly, most human beings these days are in a self-centric bubble. And while they might be at times generous and kind, 
but they're in such a self-centric bubble that they have difficulty being consistently generous and kind. You know, I believe a person of character communicates clearly without wanting to be right. So in other words, when there's friction, when there's a disagreement with somebody that you're in relationship is you don't have to operate from being right. I can communicate clearly what is going on with me and certainly hold space that what is true for you is your truth. I can't unvalidate your truth. I'm sure you've heard the term gaslighting. This is convincing someone's not wrong. No, when you are when you can clearly communicate where you're at without having to be right, without having to make the other person wrong, that's a sign of character. By the way, people of character, they believe demonstrating trust is a paramount in their life, the demonstrating trust. And trust in relationship isn't just about fidelity. Trust is this person I'm with, what's in their best interest is in my best interest. That is how you develop trust with another person, by not putting someone up on a pedestal, not putting someone up above you, putting them on the same level of you. you their feelings matter. My feelings matter. Their feelings matter commensurately. Is that the right word, commensurately? I didn't want to say equally. Here's the thing about people of character. People of character who are in the dating marketplace know the importance that their actions have consequences. So they don't use people. They are very clear about seeking commitment. And while we could date someone for six weeks, eight weeks, even three months, and it not work out, they're very clear about commitment, and you're in that probationary period. But people that are not clear about commitment, let's take it slow. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's just take it slow. I don't want to put a label on it. Let's just be casual. Those are the ones that end up that's those are the experiences where you might feel you might end up feeling used because people of character are very crystal clear about commitment but being in integrity with their words being in integrity with their words this is so so critically important how many times has a guy said to you i want a relationship i want a relationship i want a relationship he sleeps with you and all of a sudden i don't want a relationship well then, then why, why weren't you clear about that ahead of time? Now, you could simply say, I don't want a relationship with you. And I recognize that a lot of times we say, I don't want a relationship with, want a relationship because it's really, I don't want a relationship with you. Then, then be honest, be clear about that with someone because it rather hurts to say one thing and then go be inconsistent. Now, people of character, they have their act together. They have their act together. You know, their life, their life isn't in chaos. Now, that's not to say that there could be moments of chaos, okay? But for the most part, the people of character, the ground underneath them, for the most part, is solid, okay? And I'm using the term character. We're using the term high quality. We're using high value in this. And just merely, these are attributes and traits for people that are more intentional in the dating process than the average person these days. Now, I think one aspect of people of character, and again, this is men and women alike, they are introspective. They work on themselves. They grow beyond their limitations. They grow beyond their limitations. And most importantly, they are empathetic. In other words, they, they operate from a place of not only I can feel your feelings, but your feelings matter. And so do my feelings matter. In other words, you they operate from a place of empathy for themselves and for other human beings. So one of the unique traits, habits, uh, techniques that, um, that high quality men and women use when it comes to attracting another person is discernment. That's number two. The second habit is discernment. What discernment means is you're actually vetting a person early on in the dating process to determine if there's alignment for one another. 
they want to they 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 they're unafraid to have the hard conversations high quality men are attracted to women who have a capacity to have the more difficult intimate conversations but jonathan i am told to be in my submissive state of being i have to submit to man i shouldn't make it difficult for him of course, when you're with broken men, when you're with low vibrational men, when you are with arrogant men, when you are with um, ridiculously alpha personalities, they don't want you to be a high quality person. They don't want you to love yourself. They don't want you to be discerning. They want slaves, basically. They want people to do their bidding. I'm sorry, I'm being blunt when I say this, but that's what they want. They want people to operate at their beck and call because they're incapable of actually being a partner to another human being. And when you learn discernment and you're with a high quality man of character, he's going to appreciate you much more because you're both most likely on the same wavelength. Because guess what? He's vetting you as well. He's vetting you as well. It's a two-lane street here. I want you to understand this. And this is what's ridiculously attractive to that high-quality, high-value man of character. And the third habit and technique is discipline. The discipline. In other words, You've heard the phrase, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. What discipline represents in this conversation is the ability to recognize a red flag and sticking to being more curious about a red flag. It's about sticking to a deal breaker within your life. See, here's the challenge for many of us, and I'm guilty of this, folks. We take a red flag and paint it green. We overlook things because we're getting something over here and we overlook some major things over here. I believe what's ridiculously attractive is when we can hold to our power, we hold to our sovereignty. And when we do that, we become incredibly attractive to both genders or um, from a heterosexual perspective. You know, discipline doesn't care how we feel. And discipline isn't meant to be absolute willpower. Discipline is about standing in your power, particularly when you have a habit of giving your power away. And discipline is staying in your sovereignty and your power. And let me just say this. Discipline in your mindset, particularly when it comes to, when it comes to the recognition that, yes, we are swimming in a minefield of dysfunctionality out there. And yet everybody has the possibility to be the exception and not the rule. And what I mean to say is the rule of thumb is, yeah, a lot of people who are single right now over 50, they're not going to have a relationship. That's the rule of thumb. But everybody has the potential when you hold that space of doing that self-love work, to doing discernment, to doing the inner work, to being in your sovereignty. You have the potential of attracting an amazing partner in your life. I want you to hold that space, hold that vision, because hope is a wonderful thing. And when we give up on hope, we find ourselves swimming in the sea of everyone else when we've given up hope. And I'm here to encourage everyone to hold that vision, to hold that power that it is absolutely within your grasp. grasp to attract a healthy, happy relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. If it is, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear what you have to say. As always, if you find, if you find value in what I share, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, Right below are links to schedule a discovery call with me to check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery to follow me on Instagram to get the books I recommend. And also my dating vows are listed below. All right, it's time for Q&A. If you have a question, there's a little chat box there. Write the word question, then post the question thereafter. Or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat. There's a little dollar sign in the chat box. 
All of the monies from the super sticker, super chat goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's a picture of him right there with his brother, Colin. In his name, we donate to causes like the Hoffman Process, Insight Institute, and also scholarships to coaching as well. So hit that little dollar sign. Our goal tonight is $50. Also, if you want to join the hot seat, I just put a link right there. You can join me live right now. Hit that link. Join me live and we can chat. Uh, you can ask any question and I won't charge you for it. Okay. All right. Let's see what we have in the way of what people say. Rebel says, awesome. Yes. Great ideas. Covered a lo lot of great ideas. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Jane Spitfire says, I would rather be alone than desperate for a man. I can appreciate that. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let's see what we've got here. Do, 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 do. If you have a question, write the word question. Jane says, the grocery store man was not my type at all. Some women are desperate for any man. Nope, not at all. I think when we're desperate, it's because we are lacking in our emotional sovereignty. I think that's what happens when we get desperate. We get We disconnect from our own sovereignty. Hopefully everyone knows what the word sovereignty means. Oh, Annika's in the house. Is there a healthy amount of chemistry? For me, it's either intoxicating or overwhelming. You know, it's interesting. I interviewed uh, some months ago, Matt Kahn and Joy Kingsborough. Look for the interview. You Look under my playlist of interviews. It's Matt Kahn and Joy Kingsborough. And when they met, it was as if they had a soul connection. There was an affinity to one another. And, and within that, they had strong chemistry for one another. But it was more, I believe that when you connect with that true soul partner, you feel it on an energetic level, not I want to fuck your bones level. When you're operating from I want to jump your bones, that intoxicating space, that oftentimes is, um, it could mean from a spiritual perspective that they are a lesson in your life <laughs> and you're going to learn a lesson from that person and not necessarily go with them the distance. So you may want to watch that interview I did on divine partnerships with Matt, someone write in the chat box, Matt Kahn, K-A-H-N, and Joy Kingsborough. Go to my interview, um, go to my um, interviews. Um, and you can find that one. All right, Jacqueline is in the house. Do, 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 or no, Julianne, excuse me. How long does it take for mass to fall when getting to really know someone? Uh, well, sometimes never. Some people are so entrenched in their wounds and the 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 um, stories that they've made up for themselves, and it's all a self protection mechanism. I'll be interviewing someone next week and talking about this in more detail. Um, Deb Battersley, Battersey, um, but yes, um, I think for the most part, within the first ninety days, people Chris Rock calls it their ambassador of them best selves. I think within 90 days, you're going to see more of a person's personality. Actually, a great way to see their, their true personality is travel with them. Go on an airplane raid together. Go somewhere together and see how their personality is when you travel. So the sooner you travel, the better. Uh, uh, bum, 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 bum. Lisa says, oops, let me just... Go back here. Lisa says, sometimes it just doesn't seem worth it to try to date in this day and time. Defeatist attitude. Okay, that's a defeat. Yes, I, I recognize that that's how it feels, but I don't want you to even give energy to the thought of that. I get that. I guess I get how that feels, but I don't even want you to give energy to that thought. Okay. All right. Who's going to donate to the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund? Brown Kanita says, I was texting this man who is BS all about Flash. He rejected me twice. I told him I'm from LA. I let it sit in that. If he can call, can't call or video chat and call me fake, he doesn't want me. Yes or no? I don't know what your question is. 
All right, Miss Pop Pop says, if a guy hasn't initiated and asked me out for a second or third date, does that mean they are not interested? Or should I initiate the second meeting? Let's go to coffee, lunch, or walk. You know what? A lot of men, this, okay, I had a client once who said, Jonathan, I've gone on 30 first dates in the last three years and I've not got a second date. I said, that's interesting. So, so she, um, so I was working with her and she ended up having uh, a date. And sure enough, a couple days go by and he doesn't ask her out on a second date. So I told her to write him an email and they happen to live about 30 miles from each other. And she wrote him an email saying, Hey, Tim, or whatever his name was. Um, it looks like I'm going to be in your area next week um, on Tuesday. Is there any chance you'd be available for coffee? You know, because I'm going to be in your area. And you know what he wrote back? He said, oh, my God, I would love to see you again. I thought you weren't interested in me. A lot of times men don't get the vibe that you're interested in them. So this is why I'm a big proponent is, hey, if you haven't heard from someone, ask him out. If he says, if he doesn't respond, he's not interested. If he says no, he's not interested. But there, I would say one third of the time, men don't ask out on second dates because they didn't get a vibe you were interested in them. So Miss Pop Pop, I would say, give it a try just to see what happens. I mean, you have nothing to lose to see what happens. Hey, I want to give props to Annika for the $5 super sticker. Thank you so much. And Julianne just gave us a $10 super sticker. Thank you so much. That means we're $35 away from our goal tonight of $50. Jane Spitfire's in the house. Getting closer to a person, does it depend on dating events and communication and memories you share? Mm. Actually, getting closer to someone requires emotional intimacy, emotional intimacy. I highly recommend reading this book, Emotional Intimacy, and also another book. By the way, all the books I recommend are listed below. Read this book, I Hear You, The Surprisingly Simple Skills Behind Extraordinary Relationship. When you learn how to communicate in a way that you're seen, heard, and understood, when you understand emotional intimacy, that's how you become closer to someone. See, today, most conversations is, how's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. Most everybody talks about what they're doing in their life and not what they're feeling. If you want to connect with someone at a heart-centered level, it is time to ask those questions about feelings. And if they avoid their feelings, you have to ask yourself, does this person have a capacity to receive your love if they're unable to dive into their feelings? A lot of men are emotionally constipated. I get that. I was emotionally constipated. I've had to do 3,000 hours of personal development workshops and trainings to get into a position where I can articulate myself in a way that I can emote, emote from my heart. So it takes work. Leafs wants to remind us, traveling with one person is why I always drive if long distance is involved. Interesting, okay. Uh, by the way, does anyone want to jump on the hot seat? There's a link right there to join the hot seat. All right, let's keep looking here. How did your date go? Would you recommend using a matchmaker? Actually, I canceled the date. Um, I'll be candid with everyone. I did a spiritual journey this weekend. Many people know that I use plant medicine to work on stuff. And I realized that I've got some things I've, I'm working on emotionally. And I didn't feel in a space to want to meet someone right now. I thought I did, but I really looked inward after this experience this past week. And I said, I've, I don't want to say I've got some fears. It's just, I don't feel like I'm, I'm in the right headspace to go on a date with someone. It's interesting. I, I, but by the way, I, I invited a female friend to join me at the journey. So I got the benefit of feminine energy. I've got, I'm meeting a female friend next week um, and it's non-romantic. Um, I'm actually thinking about just spending time with female friends. When I say friends, acquaintances, most mostly, 
um, that is, you know, like we have, you know, we have things in common. We have uh, a shared mindset. We're kindred spirits. So I've been investing in that um, as a way to fill my love cup of feminine energy, if you will, um, because I, I don't want to go on a date until I feel like, honestly, I I really don't want to go on a date. I mean, I know this is going to, this is kind of um, fantasy thinking, but I want to have my last first kiss. I'll be candid with you. I want to be very selective. I don't want to go on a date just for the sake of going on a date. I really want to connect with someone, hopefully in an organic sense, or at least we've connected uh, even in a um, cyber way. And we spent some time really getting to know each other and then and recognizing if we're compatible with one another. Again, this is what I teach in my private coaching. Check out the links below. I'm operating from that place of I'm only going to go on a date when I feel like it's a really good fit for us. So hopefully that answers your question, Annika. Thank you so much. I want to give Tracy props for the $10 super sticker. That means our goal is $25 left for the evening. So thank you so much. Rose writes, why do men feel like we aren't worth it if we don't have sex with them after just one date? It's not a worth issue. It's that I'm going to be candid with you. I'm a horny son of a bitch. Like when I go on a date with a woman, I'm like, I'm like, I want to have sex with them on the first date. I have enough awareness that I'm not going to get that. When I was driven, like after my divorce, I was so unconscious and, and dating. My little head was doing the talking. And I wasn't in a real good space. Men who are emotionally broken, men who are, are constipated, men who are self-centric. Um, this is why I do, I help women really vet for emotional maturity. When you can learn the techniques and asking the right questions to determine emotional maturity, you are so better off than 99% of the women out there that you're going to actually become more of a magnetic attractor for what you want. But why does this happen? Because they're driven by their dicks is why. They're not driven by their heart. They want, they so want to feel love but we are so conditioned, we men are so conditioned, biologically speaking, to spread our seed and believe sex equals relationship success. This is why many of everybody, most everyone believes that chemistry equals relationship success, and that's the furthest thing from the truth. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Arlene writes, hi, Jonathan. It's getting more and more challenging to get a phone call, let alone meet and greet. Why is this happening? You know, swiping, it is bastardized and marginalized human connectivity. Swiping has. We have literally, I think the last five to 10 years, it's been so bastardized and marginalized in the dating realm that we just are so desensitized to treating people with a, a fair amount of respect. And this is true. Ladies, you girls are no pick. Ladies are, no, I say girls, I apologize if I offended anyone. You ladies are no picnic either. You can be just as much jackasses as men can be. Um, let's keep going here. Okay. Y-A-C-H-W-B says, question, if a guy, if a guy's priority has always been drinking buddies, how long do you give him to adjust to making a woman his priority? When he makes the decision, he wants to get married. He wants a life partner. When he has a long-term mating strategy versus a short-term mating strategy, when he declares he wants a life partner, he operates completely differently. Lisa is in the house. What's resonating with me, Jonathan, is that I gave up on a future with a man, but I don't want one. I don't want one with a woman either. Okay. Thank you for sharing. I hope you don't give up on, on men, ladies. I mean, I, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the women who win are the women who are absolutely in a space of their, they are, they deeply believe 
or let me just say this. I deeply believe that you have the power to attract whatever you want. I hold that space for you when you're ready for it. Okay, let's keep going. Ty is in the house. Question, why do some guys get turned on when you're calling them out on their mess? Because it's attractive, because we appreciate your, we respect your power. I mean, I, I would say when a woman calls me out on something, I actually have a deeper respect because I don't look at her as a doormat. I don't look at her as low hanging fruit. That's the way I look at it. Leafs is in the house. Very honest of you, Jonathan. Thank you. Does anyone have any personal questions for me? I'm willing to answer those as well. Barbara says it may be time to consider taking on a lover. If you're not ready to date with intention, consider another in another intention. You know, I've had friends with benefits in my life. I've had hookups. I, you know what? My I want a heart on to go with my heart on. I want a heart on to go with my heart on. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't get that high up. Um, but I want a heart on to go with my heart on. And when, and by the way, a lover, I don't, I don't feel a heart connection with a lover. I mean, what I mean is um, like a friend with benefits. All right, Tracy's in the house. How could I tell what attachment style is? Seems like I attract guys who don't value me and don't stay true to their word. Therefore, they have they have been doing a lot of in therefore have been doing a lot of inner work. When you value yourself, that's when a man will value you. When you are in your sovereignty, broken men that won't value you won't stick around very long. So it's not about their attachment style, it's about your sovereignty at least in my opinion anyway. All right, Chrissy's in the house. A man I'm a man I am in a serious relationship with and we are very close all of a sudden his ex-wife walked in his house all of a sudden he is quiet and distant what should I do? Well, I'm assuming this already happened. So what did you do? Because I don't think it happened exactly as you typed it because you're asking, what should I do? Um, so sometimes ex-spouses have difficulty with boundaries, especially when you've been integrated into someone else's life and now it's broken apart. So for some people, they have a challenge with boundaries. Um, I think you need to take a cue from the person who's you're in serious relationship and ask him, how did he feel? It would share with him how you felt about it and find out how he felt about it and find out how a boundary can be created so it doesn't happen again, Chrissy. That's how I would approach it if that happened again. Most likely she doesn't have good boundaries and I would talk to him about it and I would talk and I would ask yourself, how did you feel about it? Why don't you tell us how you felt about it? Margaret is in the house and just gave us a $15 super sticker. That means we're $10 away. Why don't we shoot for $100 tonight then? <laughs> Lisa says, Jonathan, I'd go on a, a date with you if we live closer. I appreciate that, but I really only want to go on a date with someone where I feel already a connection with them. I don't, I don't want to do blind dating. I just, I, it's, it's, if I happen to connect with someone and there's an affinity for the two of us, those are the ones I want to go on a date with. But thank you. I appreciate that. Let's keep going. Rose says, thank you, Jonathan, for your advice. I appreciate it. I hope that someday I find that one man who will be there for me and will say, I'm worth it. Amen. I hold space for you as well. Tracy wants to know, what are the three qualities you find sexy, interesting in a woman? What are the, what do I find sexy, interesting? I'm very attracted to a woman who is inquisitive. Somebody who has a, who has an inquisitive mind, particularly has an, a desire to want to get to know me. That's asking questions to me about me and wanting to understand how I think. That's one thing I find incredibly sexy. I think a woman who is in her power 
without having to be right, without having to be controlling. And I think one of the things I find incredibly sexy is a person who has an agreeable personality. I was in a relationship with a woman once where it was like pulling teeth, trying to figure out the right restaurant and how to make her happy with so much fucking work. I like somebody with an agreeable personality, like an easy, laid back, chill, agreeable personality. So for me, inquisitive in their sovereignty and um, agreeable, easygoing, chill personality. Charlene wants to know, what does sovereignty mean? Well, let's, hey, Google, what does sovereignty mean? Here's the definition of sovereignty, supreme power or authority. Okay. What it means is being in your power, being in your authority, being in your autonomy. It means not giving your power to someone else, meaning you are in charge of your relationship destiny. You are in charge of your choices. You don't give that responsibility to someone else. That's what it means to be in your sovereignty. And I believe sovereignty is an English word. So um, kings were sovereign of the state, as an example. Question, I am lectured, I lectured my serious boyfriend that he should set boundaries with his ex-wife when she walked into his house without knocking. Ever since then, he is quiet and distant. What should I do? It's because you lectured him. Nobody wants to be lectured. Nobody wants to, no man, if you did that to me, I'd say, fuck you, I'm done with you. I'm sorry. When someone lectures, I'm, 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 I'm okay, I'm getting, I got agitated, so I'm ranting. When someone lectures me, that's not a loving act. That's a parental act. I don't, our ch ch parents lecture their children. A partner has a conversation with them. So the fact that he's quiet and distant, I'm not surprised. I would apologize is what you should do for lecturing him. Does anyone agree with me? Should she should she apologize for lecturing him? That's it's 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 completely different having a conversation versus lecturing someone because that's his home. He can he can allow her to walk in whenever he wants. That's on him. That's not on you. I know you didn't appreciate it, but it's not your job to lecture him, Chrissy. Um, Margaret says, "Great answer. Thank you so much." Leaf says, Jonathan, I sincerely respect your growth since your channel started. You have some, you've come a long way. It's interesting. I've got, if you all, if you folks knew me 15 years ago, I was a true train wreck. By the way, very quickly, agreeable does not mean no boundaries. Exactly. Agreeable just simply means they don't, in fact, it's the opposite. They don't have to constantly be putting up a boundary. <laughs> Uh, no, I have not started writing a new book. Tracy says, no lecturing. Unacceptable. Exactly. Expressing is different than domineering. Exactly. Weijin says, yes, I agree. Apologize. Brown says, I agree. It wasn't his choice. She came over. Exactly. Yeah, he didn't do anything intentional. By the way, who wants to join me on the hot seat? I just post the link there. All right. Uh, well, first off, she said someone says, I agree, but he's obviously enabling this behavior. First off, that is not obvious. That's an assumption, okay? Because we don't know what he said. We don't know what he's thinking. All right, now there's a lot of judgment going on here. Hey, let's let's go down a different train track. So, folks, my channel isn't like one of those get your ex back or, you know, like, you know, how to get a date. That's not my channel. My channel is all about individual empowerment. I'm here to encourage individual empowerment, better communication skills, and recognizing that we human beings are flawed. And the more we come at it from a place of compassion and intentionality, the greater chance we have relationship success. Oh, Julianne is in the house. Julianne, really wait one second. I just want to give uh, Lori some, well, I'll give Lori props in a moment. Let's get Julianne in the house. 
Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, Look at that smile. Well, I was trying to get my dogs to hush. This is the second time I've been on here. And I have a lot of questions. I was like, I can't type them fast enough. I asked about yep. the masks earlier. So I went on a group blind date a couple weeks ago and it, it went horribly. And um, it's been about like a year since I've been in a longer term relationship. I was with him about nine months. And going on this group blind date, I'll spare you the details, but what it just made me decide, I think I'm just ready to just be alone, but I don't know if that's like the right well, why don't you like, Why don't you just, well, why, we better find out what the heck happened. So uh, why was it horrible? Well, um, okay. So I went with a friend and she's okay. like, you have to meet my boyfriend's friend. I want to set you up. And I was, I kept saying no for Did you mean a double date? A double blind date. Yeah. And so we okay, all had so you dinner. Both, you and a girlfriend were both on blind dates. Well, no, her, her boyfriend, they've been together for three okay. years and it's her boyfriend's best friend. Okay. So, you, so basically yeah. a blind date. Okay. Double date. Yes. Blind so date. I okay. show up, this is the first time I've met him. Um, okay. and, um, I I've known her for, you know, like seven years or so and okay. dinner. I mean, it went well and everything, um, long story short, um, he paid for everybody's dinner, which was nice. Okay. And okay. it's time to walk back to the car. And he's like, may I walk you to your car? But well, first of all, like he did not really ask a whole lot of questions about me. I was like, Hey, have you been married? Do you have kids? And you think that he would reciprocate none of that. He just kept wanting okay. to talk about himself. And I was like, Oh, but, um, okay. so he walks me to the car and he grabs me and tries to kiss me and asks me to stay all night with him. I'm like, okay, I just met you. Okay. <laughs> like I okay. move slow as molasses, but he has a really good job. And his job is interesting. So I was like, I'm, I'm a sucker for punishment, a uh, glutton for punishment. So I was like, let me give him one more chance. So he- Wait, wait, um, time out. Did you tell your friend what had happened? No, she hasn't asked yet. I think she kind of knows, but- um, When did this date happen? How many the days day ago? The day before Easter. And then the last time I seen him was um, a week ago. Well, that was weeks ago. Well, yeah, but like I saw him wait, last wait, week. Wait, wait, I, why aren't you calling your friend and saying <laughs> this what happened? Like your friends are supposed to be protective of you. So that should have well, been Well, okay, thing. maybe I shouldn't have said friend. More like an acquaintance, like friend. Like we don't really okay, hang out like okay. on the regular. Um, okay, got it. So, yeah, so she's, you know. But um, I, I gave him another dinner shot. You know, I was like, okay. Yeah. My mom's like, Julie, you, you know, you're being too picky. And okay. so... Um, went out with him again and the same thing, no reciprocation. Um, none okay. of that. I did. I was just, I just wasn't feeling it, you know? And, um, he, again, he tried, he tried to kiss me and I'm like, okay, I'm as slow as molasses. You're going to have to just like, did you actually me. kiss him back? No, no, he, okay. no, he like grabbed onto my waist and I pushed him away. Okay. And I was like, okay. no, that's not, you know, Especially when the whole dinner conversation. By the way, can just... I interrupt you, Julianne, for a second? Yeah, I could just like blab on and on. No, 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 no. It's okay. I want to keep doing it. But ladies, if you're if, if you're listening to this right now and that happens in the future, here's what I want you to say to a man. What am I doing that makes you think this is okay? Mm. What am I doing that makes you think this is okay? Like, in other oh words, gosh, am I good. giving off a signal? Is it my perfume? Am I giving you the come fuck me eyes? What am I doing that makes you think that kissing me without permission is okay? Like, I, I'm I'm talking to everyone right now, Julianne. I right. want everyone to, you know, like it could be a man putting his hand on your leg or something or being pushy, whatever it is. What am I doing that makes you think this is okay? Hmm. Well, well, that's that my just first be, experience. I got it. You and, weren't prepared yeah. for this. So, but I'm no. saying now to everybody <laughs> if this happens. Okay. So, okay. How did the date end and where are you at since then? Um, 
I told him I'm not interested. It ended. I, I told him, I was like, I told you no the first date that I moved slow and you really haven't gotten the chance to get to know me. And um, you don't know if I've been married, you don't know if I have kids, you don't even really know what I do for a living. Yeah. You like know nothing. Like you just well, you want to make said up, it differently. I'm you know? curious. Oh. What you, you, okay. So here I'm giving teaching here for everybody. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm really curious why you didn't ask me questions about my life. Are you in, you know, is, is, how do you get to know a person if, you know, like, I'm curious why you didn't do this. Like come at it from a place of not saying what they didn't do. Come at it from a place of curiosity. Like, I'm curious why you weren't interested in getting to know about my past relationships, about my life. Do I have children? What do I do? I'm just curious. Like, I like that. you see the difference in energy? Yeah. <laughs> For like sure. when you said you didn't do this, you didn't, it's like, it's like, you didn't do this. You didn't do this. You didn't do this. So like, I'm just curious why you didn't do it. Okay. okay. I like it's that. A, it's a, little more, a little more gentle and yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's like no, that. you know what it is? It's, it's more, it's yes. I, I mean, I could see how you perceive it as gentle because the other one is harsh. Right. But what it is, it's more benign. In other words, it's giving them an opportunity to be you know, it's appreciative inquiry. It's allowing them to kind of reflect upon themselves. I've been with women. I, I'm going to share something with you, Julian. I've been with women that all they did is talk about themselves on a date. Some people are rather nervous or some people believe that's how you get to know them. They're not, they don't understand that they're focused on wanting you to get to know them. They don't recognize the other way around. Gotcha. It's it's just an unconscious trigger. They're like, I'm just going to tell you about me and you can tell me about you. You can, I mean, you could have said, well, I've been married. You could have, you could have said, oh, I've been married too. I have this, I, this is my job. You could have, they, they don't know how to be in, in, in the space of inquiry, in, inquiry or inquisitiveness. Hmm. It doesn't okay. mean that they're bad people. It's just they they lack that sense of awareness. So the date ended and you're now, kind of feeling like I'm done with dating. Is that right? Um, not done, but this is where, this is where the question leads to. So okay. what is a good time frame to take for like, you know, how long should one, um, not date, you know, and how long is too long? Because sometimes we can get like settled in, uh, content, complacent in our own ways and, um, just comfortable, even like being single, you know? And it's like, I'm, I'm happy right now being single, but I still long for that companionship eventually. So what is a good break, you know, and what are some, um, like valid things, you know, that I could be working on, you know what I mean? Like in that, in that break. So, okay. You know, it's interesting. I have a, a, a new awareness that was introduced to me. When am I willing to share the remote control on the TV set? <laughs> when am I willing to share the remote control from the TV set? No, I'm just kidding. So, so you've asked a very complicated question. Now, here's the thing. Just simply say yes or no. Do you want to be in a fully committed relationship? Yes. Okay. So you want, you know, you want that, right? Yes. Okay. So are you a good communicator in the capacity of being able to be an active listener without using violent communication? <laughs> are you, are you um, capable of admitting when you're wrong? Are you capable or do your actions match your words? Do you operate from victim, victor consciousness versus victim consciousness? Are you transparent? I mean, and I'm just throwing out a lot of things, right? Gotcha. Okay. Just off the top of your head, yes or no to everything I just said? Uh, yes to most. <laughs> okay, yes to most. Okay, so yeah. with that said, because you could be a royal nightmare for all I know. So you could be, <laughs> you can, by the way, every human being can be in a relationship. There's a big difference between being in a relationship and being in a healthy relationship, okay? You could have a boyfriend tomorrow if you want. Everybody on my channel, you could have a boyfriend or girlfriend tomorrow. They may not be your type. I mean, you have the capacity to have a relationship with someone. Do you want a healthy relationship with someone? Well, first, it requires doing a lot of work on yourself to be in a relationship. So the question is, when are you ready? Guess what? Your heart knows the answer to that question. Hmm. Your heart already knows the answer to that question. And you're going to be ready 
like Abraham Hicks says, you're ready. You're always getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. And when that right person shows up, you're ready. You know. When you are down on the dating process, when you're like, oh, God, dating is so arduous. Oh, my God, I'm dealing with all this crap. That's not an issue of readiness. That's just a bad attitude. And True. if you're bitter, if you're jaded, if you're frustrated, if you're angry, if you have contempt, then you will just not attract anyone. A healthy relationship, you can attract unhealthy relationships all day long. So just recognize that your mindset makes up 80% of this readiness. Gotcha. Like I want to empower everyone. I, I want you to know, I deeply believe, Julianne, that you have the power to attract a great relationship in your life. You have that power within you. Now, I teach discernment as part of my coaching. I teach how to choose better. I teach you how to be more aligned to who you are and what you want. You just may not be educated. Most people are fucking clueless. <laughs> By the way, you know I curse, right? So um, most people are fucking clueless, <laughs> you know? Most of everybody watches my chat. Everybody thinks they're the exception, but I'm telling you, everybody is the rule. Most humans are clueless. They believe chemistry equals relationship success, and they don't really understand compatibility. They don't understand their own childhood wounds and traumas, their own patterns and things. Most humans don't get that. So to answer your question, you could have the most amazing relationship in the next 24 hours. That is absolutely possible. Hmm. But first, you have to want it. You have right. to really want it in your soul. Okay? You then be in your power. Be in your power. That's that self-love piece I talked about in this uh, self-love piece. Be more discerning. Ask questions before you meet someone. You should have asked yeah. your friend a lot more question. When was yeah, their last? that's you know, what like, was... Weird. Um, I mean, she just told me like, you know, what he did and where he's from. Yeah, because, and... you, because most humans focus on the surface thing. Does yeah. he have a good job? Well, yes, that's important. But mm -hmm. when was their last relationship? Are they, do they want a significant relationship? I mean, it sounds like you asked it some of those questions. So be discerning. And then last, have the discipline to walk away, which you did. You walked away from it. That took discipline. Good for you. You could have said it a little bit better, but that's okay. We all, I, know. You know, I think I'm just like part. on this zero tolerance, um, like, you know, like energy right now, because I have, but you see, that's uh, not healthy energy. To, I want you to have open. The real <laughs> trick is to be open and receptive to love God, universe, spirit. I invite for Julianne and everyone else who's watching yes. myself included <laughs> to attract in a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship where we have amazing attraction and connection for one another. And the communication between the two of us is off the charts. Yes, and we amen. can banter all day long and we can speak to each other without having to be right. And when we have conflicts and differences, we can resolve them with ease. And we're so compatible and our lifestyles are blendable with one another. And we share the same values at a core level with one another. And we can build the deep roots of trust to establish a healthy, happy relationship. God, universe, spirit, I invite that in for everybody, Julianne, myself included. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, okay. So it could happen Help. anytime. Just have to be um, receptive and open. And um, all right. And it's not that I'm like negative Nancy or anything. I just want to level up this time because I was, okay, married. We'll level I was up. married for a really long time to um, somebody who didn't reciprocate. So, you know, it's, I guess it's like, well, no one wants so to settle. Actually, okay. So I want you to put together a list of 25 qualities and values that are most important to you in a relationship okay. and then come report 25. back to me is that okay okay 25 <laughs> 25 okay. i was gonna make it 50 so I'm that's a generous. lot 25 is a lot no it's okay. not that's nothing it's not? Okay. okay nothing are these like physical mental spiritual emotional all I'll of let it you decide what it is I'll okay let you decide. okay okay, okay. Good can i reach into the camera and give you a big gigantic jonathan bear hug Ah, thank you. <laughs> All right, Julianne. Thank you for being on. <laughs> take care. <laughs> All right. Take care now. You know, Julianne asked a wonderful question. You know, first off, she shared her story about what happened. And I just want to remind everyone that little phraseology, what am I doing that makes you think this is okay? Okay. I love that. And then secondly, be in, be in your power, your self-love, be discerning and be disciplined. 
and hold to that space and hold that vision that you can actually attract a healthy, happy relationship in your life. I hold that space for everyone to have that. I hope this, um, and I hope that resonated with you as well. Okay. Hit that like button. If it did resonate with you, if it did post a comment below, I'd like to hear your thoughts. And again, if you want to connect with me to learn how to be discerning, check out the links below as well. All right, Lori's in the house. And she posts a question. Thank you for the $10 super sticker. I'm 45, never been married, have no luck with men. I feel I'm too old and I'm starting to mourn the death of my love life. Is it too late? Most men online want younger women. Any advice? First off, Lori, I have hundreds of thousands of women who would kill to be 45 year old again. I'd say I have a lot of clients in their 50s and 60s that would love to be 45 years old again and out in the dating marketplace. You're in a perfect place in your life. You're right at midlife. You still have half, you've only hit the halfway point in your life. So um, you're in a great place. My advice, exactly what I told that other woman. That's the exact advice I offer to you to listen to what I said to Julianne. Okay. Thank you so much for the $10 super sticker. Let's keep going. Rebel said, great, Jonathan. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's keep going. Wow. Oh, oh my God. I missed all these comments. <laughs> Heather wants to know, how long is your list? I have it downstairs. Remind me and I'll pull it up and speak about it tomorrow. I'll share my list of qualities and values that are most important to me. All right, folks, you know what? We hit our hour mark. I think this will be a great place to wrap up this video. Did it have value for you? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear what you thought about it. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, check out the links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out my Instagram page. Check out all the books I recommend listed below. And Sandra says, spot on, Jonathan. You are so correct. What I'm doing that gives you an idea. It's okay to kiss me. Spot on. Late Back in the 80s and 90s, gentlemen would ask a lady. May I kiss you? Exactly. By the way, some of us men still do that. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic child the bear of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone a pet, teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Leafs and Walk a Minute and Ty and Elena. Oh, wait, Elena and... Um, and Margaret, and um, Holly, and Sandra, and Julianne. That was so sweet of you. By the way, gorgeous eyes, Julianne. You have beautiful eyes, beautiful smile. You are a beautiful lady. Betty says, uh, I want to just give props to Betty, and Jennifer, and Heather, and Jane Spitfire, and Brown Kanita. And Lori, thank and everyone who donated tonight, thank you so much for the love. I am so grateful. Wishing you all a super duper wonderful, fantastic evening. Be well. Thanks so much. Bye.